All right, I'm back. So I'm gonna try a new format uh, on the channel here. Um, just kind of concentrating on certain aspects of the trike build rather than trying to explain everything that I want to do. So in this episode, what we're gonna do is get the floor put in. Um, I need it to be removable because it has the um, like the VIN number welded in on the frame and I don't know if that has to be seen for the inspection or not. Because again, this hasn't been on the road since 1996. So what we're gonna do is use three quarter ply, some scrap metal that I found uh, for the side skirting and all this will make sense, you'll see what I'm talking about. And then um, we're gonna laminate the plywood in a 20 gauge sheet metal that I picked up last year. So. Um, what's to come is just the steps that I did uh, to get to that point. So stay tuned, here it comes. Now, as you can see right here, this used to be open, this section here. Um, so I cut out some metal, uh, just did a paper template, cut it out so it gives a, a nice side to it. So when this uh, piece goes back in, you pop that in. So once this piece is in position where it belongs, you can see we want to uh, work our gaps here, and then it's wider on the bottom. So I'm going to recut this a little wider on the bottom. We're actually going to pull this off, okay? Because as I said, I want to make that a bit longer. So we put this aside for now, because that's what we're going to work on next. Um, and then I cut out this metal that I had. It's a lot thicker than I wanted to work with, but it was wide enough to cover. Let me just stand that up. Uh, the gap here, right? So when the Previous person built the trike, they had these tabs, metal tabs here. I don't really want to grind all of these off. So this sits up high, so I need the metal to kind of skirt to the side, but as you can see, when I pull this off, it's gonna leave room for everything, okay? So I cut out the wood, I cut out the metal. Uh, let me get this lined up, okay? And then what I did was um, I cut the piece, obviously it was straight metal, I kind of pushed it in, and then I just used clamps. Um, obviously the floor wasn't here, I just did it on the frame. I used clamps, my big C-clamp, for my uh, holding metal and welding, and I was able to kind of pry it to hit this curve, and then I countersunk all the holes. With all of those countersunk, they'll be flat. I can spot weld those in so they won't back out, and then once all this is taken care, I gotta come up a little higher here, I just realized. Um, but once all of this is in, um, and in place, once we get this back piece in, uh, we're going to be able to cut the sheet metal to laminate and then we'll spot weld it throughout. Alright, so what I did here is I have the back piece in. Um, so we know that I have to make the cut a little wider on the bottom in comparison to the top. So what I did was just uh, measured from the inside of the metal strip that the sheet metal will tack to. And I marked it out two feet um, and then measured out to that two foot line. It's just easier to get a measurement like that instead of having to try to like bend the tape measure in and get an accurate reading. Nine and a half on the up and then this is the width. And then here's our up and then here's the width. Uh, we should probably transfer that on here, 36. One eighth on the bottom. All right, so let's go uh, measure this out and we'll cut it. Don't forget your PPE. All right, now we got to cut the width. This will be slight angle, so we're going to freestyle this. Straight in, which means I'll probably mess it up. Hey, everybody. So, I'd like to talk about the importance of. Measure twice, cut once. <laughs> I don't know, I did my math wrong. Close that loop. Um, so I cut it wrong. I was off by two inches. So my math, okay? So what I did is I could have just cut out a whole other piece because I have enough of the sand ply to do it. But I might change the design of the seat on the trike and I don't want to dump another 40 or 50 bucks that I spent on the wood. So 
and sliced it. Cut down the middle, added a piece, glued it, screwed it. You're not gonna see this anyways. Um, so we're gonna move on, okay? So we're back on track. Just make sure you measure right. All right, so I put the piece back in. I'm just gonna, uh, these are temporary uh, aluminum braces that I had made. I'm just gonna tack these in and then what we're gonna do is um, screw this from underneath on the back side up into there and that's gonna hold it just fine until uh, we go and that'll hold it just fine until we um, laminate it in the sheet metal weld everything in place and then it's not gonna move even if it wanted to so there we go now comes the fun part the in and out in and out in and out so we can figure out uh, the gap here, so we have the metal edge to weld to on each side. All right, so we got the uh, side pieces in, um, all screwed in, ready to go. I'm gonna have to refine up at the top, but I won't know until I have the sheet metal um, bent and put in place. Um, so I'll be able to refine that to where it's needed. I'm actually really happy with how they came out. My idea worked. Just use some washers as spacers. Um, All right, so I guess uh, we'll say that concludes this episode of uh, Floor Pan uh, for now, to be continued when we do the sheet metal work. Uh, I'm gonna reach out to a buddy. Uh, he owns a sheet metal shop. I'm gonna see if he can do uh, some of the bending for me. I can bring the whole seat pan or well, floor pan over there and we can bend everything to go. If not, I mean, I can still get it done. It's just more welding which means more body work and grinding. So we'll see if we can do that at his shop and get it back. Um, up next is gonna be the shifter area, as I'll call that. So that'll be like the next episode. And then after that, uh, the one after that is gonna be the gauge cluster. Um, and then it's really gonna start taking shape. So like I said, we'll keep doing each one as uh, its own little segment so I can get more videos out uh, more often to anyone who's interested in seeing it. So uh, be good. Keep creating, as always. Um, remember, it might not be perfect, but it's good enough for me. And whatever you do should be good enough for you, too. Um, you just know you make mistakes. Measure twice, cut once, huh? All right, be good. Bye.